the solar system is not a very populated place, but if you compare it to deep space, the traffic here is quite lively. Current scientific understanding of the world around us suggests that of the eight planets, life is present only on Earth. What gives us the right to assert such a claim? First of all, visual and space research, although given our relatively primitive technology, this is an unreliable source. I wonder what the inhabitants of other worlds would say if they observed our planet through a telescope or hovered in its orbit for some time. Would they be able to detect signs of life on Earth? Not a fact. <sighs> But in some cases, we are almost 100% sure that certain planets or satellites of the solar system are absolutely dead. And it is not necessary to land on their surface, as was the case with Mars or the Moon. The conditions on such objects are simply so harsh that if life is possible there, it is more likely in the forms of extreme mophiles, and the probability of this is quite negligible. Take Neptune, for example. This huge globe of ice is characterized by extremely extreme temperatures and hellish winds, so it is doubtful that anything could survive there. Voyager 2, which flew near the planet in 1989, proved this conclusively and even sent documentary evidence. Want to hear the story of the most ambitious project of the early space age? Then get everyone's attention and go for it. We won't sound all the way through Voyager 2 as its journey is still ongoing. The communication with the spacecraft is practically lost, but what is known is that if nothing happens to divert the probe, it will plunge into the Oort cloud three centuries later and rendezvous with the legendary Sirius 200. 96,000 years later. But back then, in August 1989, no one thought of such long-range prospects. The objective of the spacecraft was clear, to fly past Neptune and gather as much information about it as possible. It is the last solar system planet to be visited by the spacecraft, and it has coped with the job flying over the pole of the celestial body only 3,000 kilometers away. Earth astronomers knew less about Neptune than they did about other solar system objects. This is quite understandable, because the giant is four 4.5 billion kilometers from the sun. Voyager 2 clarified many points and solved a lot of mysteries of the distant planet shrouded in a blue haze. The apparatus began with the fact that on the approach made a photo of Neptune, which then flew around the world. Prior to that, Voyager 2 swept past all the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus in turn. The probe revealed things about the planet that scientists had never imagined. Astronomers obtained nearly 95% of the information about Neptune from Voyager 2. What did we know about the planet before that? First, that the year on Neptune is 164 Earth years, and second, that the seasons on it last 40 years each. The rest was in the realm of speculation and hypothesis. So what did the spacecraft see on the misty planet? The probe has literally flooded the Earth with scientific measurements and images. For the first time, the rings of Neptune were discovered, much more modest than those of Saturn, but still quite clearly visible against the background of the poorly lit planet. The apparatus transmitted photographs of Neptune's six moons, among which Triton stands out. This is what the gas giant looks like when viewed from the body of this satellite. The world also learned about the powerful magnetic field of Neptune. It turned out that the magnetosphere stretches behind the planet like a tail, measuring hundreds of thousands of kilometers, and clarified the duration of its days. They last for about 16 hours. This figure was measured by radio noise sent from the probe. 
Scientists knew that gas giants do not have a surface in the usual sense of the word, but what the layers of the planet are made of until Voyager 2 was not known for certain. The probe detected an atmosphere over Neptune, which is nonsense in itself, given the extremely low surface temperature. The apparatus found out that it consists of hydrogen, helium, and methane, and at the same time, it photographed clouds floating over the planet. Think about it. If we add oxygen and lit Bickford cord to this gas mixture, we get a flare of incredible proportions instead of Neptune. But that's just the way it is, by way of nonsense. Do you think this is all the secrets Voyager 2 has discovered? Well, it's not. The most interesting part is just beginning. Despite the brief rendezvous, the probe learned quite a lot about the planet. And the first thing that distinguishes Neptune from the other objects of the solar system, the extremely difficult weather conditions. The planet's atmosphere is raging with two monstrous hurricanes called the Great Dark Spot and the Small Dark Spot. Voyager 2 captured both whirlwinds. The first one has unthinkable characteristics from the Earthling's point of view and leaves even the Jupiterian BKP behind. The Big Dark Spot, first detected and imaged up close by the probe, is an anti-cyclone 13 by 6.6 thousand kilometers in area and is quite comparable to the size of the Earth. This is a kind of vortex in the cloudy layer of Neptune and winds there blow with supersonic speeds, 2400 kilometers h. Such parameters are rare even for jets. The small dark spot is the second most intense storm. Before the disappearance of hurricanes in 1994, this figure was the highest in the solar system. Where does a frozen Neptune with a temperature of 221 C get the energy to accelerate the winds to such unthinkable speeds? A mystery that Voyager 2 has left you and me to solve. Observational equipment of the probe has also noticed auroras at the planet's poles, though several times stronger than on Earth. Would you like to know what was the last picture of Neptune taken by Voyager 2 at the farewell? It's quite unusual. Why is the photo different in many colors, you ask? In this way, the device tried to detect the methane haze covering the planet with an invisible halo and at the same time gave scientists another mystery. They have to find out how the sunlight scatters through a dusting of particles. Be that as it may, this was the final image before the probe disappeared forever into interstellar space. Voyager 2 didn't make the 12-year journey from Cape Canaveral to giant Neptune for nothing. Otherwise, there's too much we wouldn't know about this special, unlike other planets in the solar system community. NASA is planning its next expedition to Neptune in late 2020. The name of the project is Neptune Orbiter. It is not known whether its results will surpass the achievements of Voyager 2, but the huge contribution of the small probe to Earth science the world will not forget. Hubble continues to closely follow the progress of the mission to the eighth planet of the solar system. And in the meantime, please support us with likes and reposts. Click on the bell so you don't miss the main thing and you'll be happy.